Hey, this one should be pretty good. So I want to share some beautiful truth today about the twofold grace of God. I was in Proverbs last night and I was struck by this verse and it's Proverbs 16 verse 16. It says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Men as in, you know, people. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So, this mercy and truth. You know, I think I've heard something like that before in the New Testament. And it's 1 John. Not 1 John, but John chapter 1 and verses 16 and 17. It says, And of his fullness, meaning Jesus, we have all received grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So you see how the Old Testament and the New Testament are totally just blending together beautifully? Mercy and truth. Grace and truth. John 13 and verse 34 a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. John 3, 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved. See, the opposite of condemnation is salvation, and that by Jesus Christ. I want to look at John 8 briefly, since we're talking about the law of Moses and Jesus Christ. And I think this is one of the best short examples of understanding the law of Moses a little bit in this example. It's John 8, verses 1 through 11. As follows, Jesus went onto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped it down. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. I believe Jesus was praying when he stooped down. So it's very important that he didn't just bark at those people, a command or whatever. But I really believe he's praying. And he said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. So think about that. Their own conscience heard what he was writing on the ground. That's crazy. And they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. 
Go and sin no more. That is grace and truth from Jesus Christ to this woman. Grace and truth. One thing else to note that when confronting sin, that's, you know, with ourselves and an individual, it should always be for restoration and not wrath. See, one thing I noticed about those scribes and Pharisees that brought that woman in in front of Jesus to try to trick him was they didn't care about her. They cared about following some law to try to fulfill it or whatever. They didn't care about the person. It's like they were so angry and they just wanted to stone her. They wanted to condemn her. I don't know about you, but... I don't want to condemn anyone. I don't think anybody really understands what condemning someone is. Making a judgment that they deserve death for something they've done. Or they deserve this for what they've done. So, confrontation, it should always be for restoration and not for wrath. Remember, vengeance is God's and not ours. It says that in Romans 12. And then also, for some other references about your confrontation or prayer, is Matthew 18, Luke 17, 1 John chapter 5, James 5, and we'll get the oil out, and then Galatians 6. Confrontation is not only calling it out to them personally, which is a rebuke, though it can be, but confrontation is also by prayer unto God for them. It's all about helping your brother and neighbor be healed and saved and walking in his marvelous light and no longer stumbling. 1 Peter chapter 2 talks about his marvelous light. Called us, he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's sincerity. That's just being honest with God and each other. Notice how Jesus stooped down. Not just for prayer, but also, like, there's another significance of this, too. If you look at Isaiah 7.14 and Isaiah 9.6, it's Emmanuel. It's God with us. He partook of us, our flesh, his creation. Now we, being born again, partake of him. And this is John chapter 3 and verse 13, which we're going to be highlighting now the Jesus coming down from heaven. It says, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And this is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. This is specifically talking about, you know, gifts. But... I just want to note this descending. Now that he ascended, meaning Jesus, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. So not only 
did, he was in heaven and came down, but then he went back up and then he gave gifts. And specifically the gift, the Holy Ghost. And this is Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. says, talking about Jesus again, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. This is our God. Watch this closely. When he had by himself purged our sins, came down. Came flesh. When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You see that? When he had by himself purged our sins, that means he came down. And then when he ascended, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So awesome. Now we're going into Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17 kind of getting through, and then we're going to go into Hebrews 3 for a little bit. But Hebrews 2.17, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. 1 John chapter 2. You know, this is for, Jesus is for every single soul that's here, that has yet to be here. First John chapter 2 and verse 2, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of the whole world. That's why it's important that everybody needs to know who Jesus Christ is and believe in him and love him and get out of darkness and into his marvelous light, into his rest, out of dead works into the light of life that he gives us. You go, go into Hebrews 4 and then 5, it talks more about you know, our faithful high priest, and even all the way up into chapter 10 of Hebrews. But now we're going to go to Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 13, and there's a couple good things to note in this big chunk. So, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses... Verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold, the, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end? Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice... Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And this is it right here. This is, this is why we need each other. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. Huh. 
A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. That's part of that love is exhorting one another. Not in a wrathful way, but in an edifying way, in a, a positive way. You could even say it's tough love sometimes. You know, somebody does something wrong, not, hey, hey, you're stupid for doing that, but it's like, whoa, 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 did, did you see what you just did? Like, do you, do you understand what you're doing? That's harmful. That's the right attitude about it. And then sometimes we don't even have to say anything. We can just see something that somebody's doing, and then we can go home and pray, or just pray as we see it. We can stoop down and pray to the Father. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. It's so deceitful. When we are doing sin, we are no longer in his rest, and we grieve the Holy Spirit. You can see Ephesians 4 and verse 30. And this is Matthew 11, 28 through 29. This is Jesus speaking, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden in your condemnation. Laboring and are heavy laden with condemnation. He says, Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You find rest learning of Jesus Christ for your soul. Entering into that rest that it talks about in Hebrews 3. Like I mentioned, grace for grace is twofold. It teaches us to not condemn others, and it teaches us to no longer walk in darkness. John 12, verse 46. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. In John 8, 12, this is the verse right after the go and sin no more. Jesus says, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you.